Look, we ran down on these two and then stuck out. This is like, it's like every other city. In a, in a way, if you're talking about the streets and the struggle, you know, shit, it's a hood everywhere. You know what I'm saying? It's a struggle everywhere. You know what I'm saying? It's a neighborhood where it's violence and crime everywhere. So, you know, shit. Growing up, you know, I had fun, got in trouble. Good days, it was bad days. Look, I had some ups and downs. We live. What we doing, mama? Y'all see this? You know what I mean? Y'all see her look. Got my mom with the big ass hair. You know what I'm saying? You like that, baby? Yeah. Don't get me wrong. How does it work? You like that, baby? Yeah. We blessed. We without no help, it was pick up the phone. Cause they did me cold. Something that I would never say. Look. Now you got them hurting, but I'm hurting. Now you perfect, but I pray that I see better days. Destiny is one of the parts of your life that cannot be foretold. And although your life sometimes can be confusing, it is not out of your own reach to control your destiny. Melvin Noble, aka Mo3, is a prime example of someone who took his former life and turned it into a positive for his future. Born and raised in Dallas, Texas, this Oak Cliff rapper would take himself from the bottom completely to the top. Sometimes in life, you have to go through the hardships of life in order to appreciate what you have in store for the future. Raised in the streets of Dallas, Texas, Mo3 was no stranger to the hardships of life. He was even no stranger to getting in trouble. When it came to talking about his criminal past, he never shied away from the subject. In fact, he would go to the media and in interviews explain exactly what happened. My first, my first case aggravated robbery, deadly whip. Man, I got a lot of okay. aggravated robbery. First time, first time I go to jail. I stay for like, I want to say like four to five months. Uh, I come back home on a monitor on probation. Uh, catch the same charge again. Now I'm going to placement. You know, in Texas we got in the juvenile system we got a thing called placement. They probably got that everywhere. You know what I'm saying? Placement is where you go to somewhere outside. Juvenile, you know, they ship you somewhere. It's like a boy's home or something. You know what I'm saying? So uh, after that, it still continued. I ended up in Madlock, TYC. I went to uh, CCD. I went to Sequoia. I went to Service. I've been to a lot of shit. Everything, uh, every correctional facility Dallas had for juvenile at the time. Like, mama, come to this shit. And I went to all this shit. Like, yeah, I caught, I caught four of them in 17. Yeah. Four aggravated ride with a deadly weapon. I went to TDC. First time, first adult charge. The only reason they did me like this is because the juvenile charge showed the same pattern. You know what I'm saying? Mo3 would eventually be sentenced to 10 years in prison. He would only do two years for good behavior. Upon his release, he would begin perfecting his craft of rap. By 2014, he would release his debut mixtape entitled Shotters. After slowly rising in underground rap, by 2016, Mo3 would be capturing the attention of celebrities. He would receive a call from rapper Torrance Hatch, aka Lil Boosie, in which then they would work out a management deal with Empire upon the grounds of distribution. I like Dallas, I, I like the people here, I like the women. You know? <laughs> uh -huh. Okay, as far as the Dallas scene, do you know any upcoming artists? Like in Dallas, you know, that you want to work with, like, how can they contact you? Uh, yeah, I'm in, uh, I'm in agreement right now, uh, doing a management deal with Mo3. Mo3 out of Dallas, he, you know, they love him in Dallas, so, uh, we, uh, we in talks with managing Mo3 right now. And get him, you know, if, I just feel like if I get behind Mo3, that boosted badass movement get behind him, he'll get noticed. So we're going to try to take Dallas to the top with, uh, with Mo3, you know, yeah. After being vouched for by Lil Boosie, his career would begin to take off at a national scale. 
he would follow up in the same year of 2016 and release Shotters Reloaded with singles Gangsta Love and Hold Your Tongue. But as his success began to rise, so would problems from his past. Started with uh, it started the hate. I'm, the, the hates in the neighborhood started with old gang members that I used to get into when I was right here at this level. Even when that beef was dead, once I got here, they just restarted it all over again. You know what I'm saying? This was a perfect time for them and like for them to be on. It was a perfect time for them to be heard and you know. And it was like easy. It was right up their alley. Like shit, we done already beat for Mo 3 before when he was just that Mo 3. It ain't gonna be hard. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know. So that's where the hate started with that. Like, yeah. And you know shit, everybody ain't a fan of you. So them became haters. The people who don't like you. They became haters, so it's like, yeah, it circulated. But different situations, it, it, it get realer and realer. It get worse and worse, like, so, you know. You guys got a release. I know what's going on. Yeah. Ten, ten, ten U.S. Marshals. Yeah, man, ten U.S. Marshals hit my condo this morning. Ten o'clock this morning, you understand me, man? Honey K. $100,000 bun, man, made, man, you understand me? It ain't nuts, man, you feel me? After experiencing problems, Mo3 would try his best to just work through the situation and maintain through the problems. But one of the things that he did not shy away from is the fact he knew that at some point in time there would be an attempt on his life. Often prophesied in his own music videos, he would show himself being shocked. A lot of people would say that he predicted his own demise. In his own words, he would reveal the threat upon his life. No, but no, I mean, I've, like I said, I, I've had people DM me and say they got they put thirty thousand on my head. Uh, and you know, you talked about you getting those type of DMs and those yeah, type of I rumors. I get that all the time. It's it's normal. It's, it is unfortunately you're right. It becomes normal after a while. It do become the first normal. time you see it, you're like, what? And then you're like, ah, another one of these. Yeah, another one of these. Like, somebody threatened my life. Like, yeah. I'm I remember scared, one though. point. Been on the block for so long, they hate to see me. Only phone the radio or the TV screen. When you leave, you alone. It's hard to be real with them, knowing they don't want to see you eat. I come from the ghetto like my partner's meal. Had to get it out the mud to feed my mama Neil. Ooh, I'm on their ass, cause they put me last. I'm finna come first, finna hear them worry her. I just want, ooh, I want my bag, my bag. Bullets don't have a name, bullets don't really have a function. Once they leave that gun, you don't know what's gonna happen. Ricochets, the whole nine. A Dallas rapper is dead today after he was shot on I-35. 28-year-old Melvin Noble, also known as MO3, was shot on I-35 northbound near the Beckley Zanker. DPD says that Noble was approached by a gun that suspected a suspect who was driving a dark-colored vehicle. Noble apparently got out of his car and ran southbound when he was shot. Police also tell us that the gunman shot an innocent bystander. All new at 10 o'clock, Dallas. Police have made an arrest in the deadly shooting of Dallas rapper Mo3 tonight. Police are telling us that they have taken 21-year-old Kawan Dontrell White into custody for the death of Mo3. White faces a murder charge and also a charge of prohibited possession of a firearm. The rapper was shot and killed on I-35E out of his automobile near the Dallas Zoo last month.